In this video, we're going to be making one gallon of mint wine. This is DIY fermentation, your site for doing fermentation in a shoestring budget. Now to make our mint wine, we need the following. We're going to need five cups of mint. If you don't have fresh mint growing on the vine, you can always use the prepackaged stuff that comes in the, well, package. We're going to need three pounds of sugar. We need the juice of half a lemon, which is going to act as our acid blend substitute. We need one black tea bag, which is going to act as our tannin substitute. We need wine yeast. This time around, I'm going to try the uh, Premier Coup de Blanc by Red Star. Again, use whatever you got. We need a gallon of pure water. We need a gallon jug, carboy, demijohn, take your pick to do fermentation in. We're going to need an airlock with stopper. A hydrometer would be helpful to determine how much alcohol we're producing with this wine. And of course, all of our equipment will be sanitized using our sanitizer of choice. And that's what I'm going to be using to make this wine. What we want to do first is to take our mint leaves and start plucking five cups worth. Let's go ahead and give our mint leaves a good rinse. Now, we are going to pour off about half a cup to a cup of water to get our tannin substitute mixture started. And the remaining water, we're going to put that in a nice big pot. And we want to bring that up to a boil. And as far as our tannin substitute mixture is concerned, we just want to bring that up to a simmer. Now that our water has come to a nice good rolling boil, we can turn the heat down to low and we can go ahead and add in our mint leaves. Purpose being, we want a nice pot of strong mint tea. And checking our tannin substitute, we can go ahead and turn the water off there. Go ahead and get our leaves in there nice and good. All of them. <laughs> Every last one of them. And we can go ahead and put our covers back on. And we're going to let this uh, pretty much simmer for the next Oh, I don't know. There's no, no real guide to it. Probably the next half hour. All right, now that our mint leaves have done simmering, we're going to add in our 
tannin mixture. And we're going to add in four cups of sugar. And we will make adjustments later on if necessary. I want to bring our AVB or, our, or rather our hydrometer reading up to 1.080 if possible. So we'll go ahead and incorporate that sugar. And with that having been done, we can turn the heat off and we can cover our mixture and let that come down to room temperature. We want to take the juice of our half a lemon and put this into our fermenter. Being careful to strain out the seeds. Now that using our freshly sanitized dipper here, we're going to go ahead and begin transferring our mint mixture into the carboy. Now you might find a small strainer might help out a great deal helping to keep the leaves out of your carboy. And I think that's going to be enough of that. having been done, let's get ready to take a hydrometer reading. Our hydrometer reading is coming in at 1.076. Now to begin the process of turning our mint juice into mint wine, we're going to take a quarter of a teaspoon of our wine yeast. And even though there's no real way of doing it, <laughs> try just not to dump it in there. Let's go ahead and put on that airlock. Let's go ahead and label our creation. We are currently making mint wine. We started it on this date. And our original gravity reading started in at 10.076. Now for the next several days, we'll keep our eye on it to make sure that we still have active fermentation. After about ooh, seven days or so, if you want, you can go ahead and rack it into your secondary carboy and then continue the uh, process of racking every six to eight weeks or so until your wine goes clear or the wine is to your liking. Now, more than likely at the end of the process, the wine is going to go dry, which means it's going to go down to your hydrometer reading. It's going to say nine, 0 0.994 or 0 0.990, in which case there's absolutely no sugar in your wine whatsoever. And that's when you'll begin the process of stabilizing, back sweetening, and doing all that. All of these steps you can, of course, find in the uh, channel page under playlists under winemaking operations, which describes several videos how these processes will work out. Now, one other thing I should note is that we did have about a cup extra of mint juice. Ended up with about a cup extra. So what I'm going to do with that is that I'm probably going to put it in a baggie and I'm going to put that in the freezer so that the next time I rack, I want to try and reduce this head space from down here. And after you rack it, it's going to be even lower. You're going to try and bring that up closer to the top to help 
keep your wine from becoming oxidized with uh, any unnecessary oxygen. And that's the process. But there we go. My take on making a mint wine, and we'll see how this will taste in about 12 months. Okay, it's now been 12 months later, and it's now time to do our 12-month taste testing of our mint wine. A couple of things I should point out. A uh, couple of things I should point out. One, mint wine, born 10, 2021. 20, ABB came in at 10.76%, and it's been pasteurized. It also came up a little bit short in terms of overall quantity, as does happen from time to time. Doing a one gallon batch, sometimes you just don't get a full one gallon and you end up coming in at just a little bit short. So I've got a little 16 ounce bottle which came, made up the difference for the shortness that I came up with when I was doing the final bottling. Um, the wine itself was kind of hazy. I mean, it's not terrible. I mean, I could, maybe could have used pectin enzyme or something like that if I really wanted to, but overall it wasn't too bad. Uh, it's been degassed and it's been back sweetened. Um, the gassing process was kind of vigorous because it was uh, at the end a lot of gassing that needed to be done. Uh, these were just recently bottled, like uh, day before yesterday, sort of thing. So that's all the bottle resting. It's this one's going to get. Didn't bother to put a label because, well, why bother? If you're just going to use this one right away. These uh, I'll just end up putting aside. Um, yes, it, as I said before, it has been back sweetened, so I ended up tasting it just a little bit. But it's not the same thing as pouring yourself a glass and, you know, taking, having a good long sip to find out if it really tastes good or not, which is what the purpose of these taste testings are. Uh, these are just projects that I've currently got going on that need to be racked <laughs> into uh, another container. Uh, they've been sitting on this lease at the bottom of the container for far too long. I'm just now beginning to catch up. Now then, to get down to it, what does it really taste like? All right, let's see. Put myself a little bit of glass. Put the cap back on. <laughs> the profile shot. You know, surprisingly, that mint is awfully hard to detect. I mean, it's in there. It, I mean, it's in there, but it's kind of like, kind of like almost an afterthought, afterthought sort of thing. I'll try that again. <clears throat> yep, it's it's just barely detectable. I don't know if more mint probably would have been a solution to that. If I have to make a change to the recipe, uh, I probably will add uh, some additional mint. I used fresh, actually it was a combination, if I remember correctly, a combination of fresh mint and uh, I mean, the kind that you pull off, off the little little brand, uh, off the little plant and strip the leaves off. And then there was the kind that uh, they've already done there for you. It comes in a little oblong package. Um, trying to detect some of, the minty, some of the mintiness in the aftertaste, but not really. Not really, I mean, it's barely detectable. I'm just saying, I mean, it's not bad for wine. I mean, if I need something to drink and if I need something light in terms of alcohol content, uh, something light in flavor. <laughs> <laughs> this probably would be it. Nope, this probably would be it. Um, yeah, more than likely I will finish this off uh, shortly after the conclusion of this video. I mean, it's, it's not bad. It's kind of refreshing. Uh, but in terms of the uh, strong mint flavor that uh, I thought this uh, wine would produce, nope, just not there. 
<laughs> I'm afraid not. I mean, it was a worthwhile effort. I, I, I won't say that I won't make this again. Uh, if I do make this again, <laughs> if uh, I definitely will use uh, um, a lot more mint. Yep, yeah, definitely a lot more mint. Uh, however, that having been said, keep this one short, hopefully. Uh, there we go, mint wine, 12 month tasting. Uh, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. I mean, it's not bad. It's just, it, there's just not a whole lot of mint flavor there. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So if you like what you see here, please click on the subscribe and notify button. Better yet, become a member. Better yet, become a Patreon. Better yet, click on that favorites button down here and just simply make a donation. Help this channel along. Uh, you can definitely use it. So until then, I will see you in the next video.